Alright guys, we are back for another Dokkan Battle video. So, it's been a pretty busy day um, with the JP version update. Um, a lot of different things have happened. Characters got buffed. Um, there is a new mechanic that is clearly going to be coming to probably Global and JP for Worldwide Download Celebration main characters, right? Just a lot of different things going on. In the midst of all this, um, I seriously did drop this as well. Now, this is... I mean, it's... This barely almost even registers as news, but I think it is important for me to talk about this and to get on my hands and knees looking up at global players, you know, global players who are better than me, and just plead with them to be smart and to not summon for Kale. Uh, it, it's very, very easy, right, if you are, like, a Kale super fan, you know, if pulling Kale is going to make you more happy than, like, the LRs of the Worldwide Download Celebration, knock yourself out. But that is the only conceivable way I, I would say to summon for Kale, is if you are a Kale super fan, right? Pulling Kale, it, it would make you feel better than, you know, LR Beast Go on is coming, or Vegito Blue, or anything like that, right? That's where you would summon. Um, we are very, very, very close to the Worldwide Download Celebration. I mean, I've even been kind of telling global players, I mean, even not even summoning that much on Anniversary and waiting for Worldwide is better instead, because the Worldwide Download Celebration characters, these are the characters for global that take a super long time to return. JP does have a character like that, the Tanabata LR, right? For global, it's these Worldwide Download Celebration character LRs, so you're definitely going to want to try and pull them, uh, you know, now, you know, during this big celebration that's coming up, right? So, um, Kale's coming from my series again, not really too surprising too, because Kale, like, th I, I mean, I was pointing this out, I don't think that Dokkan, like, JP Dokkan, like, does stuff on JP Dokkan with Global in mind, I don't think so, um, I mean, I guess it could be wrong, but certainly it does seem like that Kale celebration, which the first half was Kale, and then the second half was just the Super Boost stuff, which made no sense, it does work very well for Global. Because the Super Boost stuff, which is Kale's essentially sort of part two, already is on Global. That came out in June. And then the first half of the celebration for Global fits very nicely. They could slide this in right here for Global Dokkan. And then we still get the Worldwide Download Celebration banners um, around this area for Global. Um, I would imagine Kale <coughs> is probably going to be released uh, within a few short days here, right? Kale's not going to be that far away. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the banner. This is Kale's banner. Um, I do not anticipate any changes to our banner. I mean, we can never say never with Global Dokkan. It's like they do random stuff a lot. Uh, I mean, this banner is really, really poor. Kale is super good. Um, Kale is a dominant character. I, I think the gap between how many in the community look at her and how good she is, it, to me, it feels like one of the largest gaps ever, right? Like, the community just looks at her as, like, a Super 17-type character or something like that, and it's like... It's just flat out disrespectful. Like, this Kale is actually, like, you know, more so akin to God Goku and Piccolo Jr. and 23rd World Tournament Goku. Like, she's doing the same types of powerful things that those characters are. This Kale is ridiculous. Uh, her weakness is just... A lot of it is tied to this guy, Frost. Frost, though, uh, is really quite bad. We're, we're going to look at him a little bit more in depth in two seconds. So, Frost was a complete miss for Kale which hurts her badly because she does need Universe 6 allies. Now, the thing about Kale, she does not need a team full of it. She only needs one. But the thing is, is that Kale is very powerful in base, but she's a slot 2 character in base, right? Once she transforms, um, she becomes a, a dominant killer. Like, like Kale right here is going head-to-head -head with every single tough boss in the game. Their big super attacks and all that, Kale is, is eating it like a champ. Like, Kale is really good. But in base, she's just a slot two. She's slot two or slot three, right? Like, you know, 99% of the game. Um, and that's kind of the issue here is the third character that's going to be coming along with this, Kale and Khalifa, they're solid. I, 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 but I can't give them more than solid. But they don't really... Them and Frost don't fulfill what Kale needs, which is Kale needs a character essentially for the first couple of turns that can go slot one for her. That's what Kale needs. And she doesn't really have it, right? Like, it's like you have to use, like, a very janky setup, right? Maybe use, like, LR Golden Freezer or something like that. The pro the, the thing is, you could use a team, you know, combo with characters and transformation boosts and stuff like that. 
The problem is that when you are using kind of these like hybrid teams, I use hybrid in the sense that it's like, you know, like, so it's like some universe six characters, you got like LR Golden Frieza, then maybe you've got like a powerful, you know, Saiyan, like, you know, Battle of Gods Vegeta or something like that, right? Like you're, you're running a team like that. It's very easy to get opened up and exposed if the team is not incredibly cohesive with really good characters across the board, right? Especially when we're going into, you know, a new tough fight like Omega. Now, right now, Global has all of the content except for one stage, which is the Omega Shenron difficult stage, which is definitely the hardest fight in the game. Now, if we take a look at this banner, character's good for that Omega fight. Kale is, but the problem is that Kale requires Universe 6, and I don't like any of the Universe 6 character in that fight. Frost sucks. I'm not a fan of Path to Power Kid Goku. The way he's designed, he's one of my favorite units ever. Doesn't mean I like him in the Sin or Omega fights, because I don't. I don't run this character typically in those fights because it's very easy for them to take a lot of damage, so I avoid that. They obviously are just trash. Ginyu, believe it or not, is very effective in the new Omega fight, I found. Because you can, you know, there's several different terrifying conqueror slash space traveling warrior type setups you can run. You can run Rakuman Goldo and Ginyu as the rotation, and they will obliterate Omega. They actually can 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 hold their own very, very well in that Omega fight, believe it or not. Um, and then Tech uh, Kefla and SCR Kefla suck balls, right? They're just not... Tech Kefla was, was, was solid-ish for a while, but I mean, it's just... No. So, of this entire banner, Kale is, is really good. Path to Power Kid Goku is still really good. And Ginyu is, is pretty good still, too. But, like, this is just not... This is not what you summon stones for. Um... This is exactly the huge point I always try and make with these types of banners. As a free-to-play player, it's not about, oh, let's get the best unit in the game or something like that. Because if that was true, you, I would have been telling people, everyone, you know, make a run, summon for Bulma as much as you can. That's not what I was saying, right? Like, it's, you want to summon on a banner with many top-tier, like, leader-type characters, rare-type characters. I, I think a lot of these arguments people have of summon on what you want is just foolish bullshit, terrible advice. The game is designed to get you to spend money. It's designed to, for you to get frustrated and spend money. That's the whole point of it. S doing single summons all the time uh, is stupid. Summoning in every banner is stupid, right? You need to be smarter than the game. You need to prioritize using your stones in a wise fashion, Especially, I have to listen to everyone say, global, 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 global foresight. We love global, 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 global. Sure, prove it to me. Don't summon on Kale's banner, right? The only people I would tell you summon on Kale's banner is if you are a Kale mega fan, right? Pulling Kale makes you happier than pulling, you know, LR Gogeta Blue who comes out in three weeks. Then yeah, summon for Kale, right? But besides that, don't touch this damn banner, right? <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Do not do it. Um, okay, so again, Kale, um, very, very strong. Kind of her gimmick in, in base, again, is she does a bunch of super attacks. She builds up damage reduction. She could be very, very good. Um, and then once you transform into Super Saiyan 2, Kale, she is crazy, right? She has this mechanic, which is so nuts. She can quad super at best. This stacks. So every super attack she does, she gains a 30% chance to crit. So her first super attack, she has a 30% chance to crit. Her second super attack, she has a 60% chance to crit. Her third super attack, she has a 90% chance to crit. If she quad supers, she has a guaranteed crit. Very, very powerful character. She's got the guard. She's got everything she needs. Um, I, I, I adore this Kale. I love this Kale. I think, what to me, something that would really get me as excited is if we had some sort of incredibly powerful LR hit, I think, could work right now, who would, could be a great Universe 6 character to help out Kale. Right, I, I think that would be incredible. I would, I would be head over heels for an LR hit. I think that would be so fire. Um, Kale is great, but Kale does still need help because again, she needs a Universe Six category LR right here. Luckily, it's only one, right? So that's why we could get Carnival LR hit, and like that could fix most of the issues Kale has. Um, and then there, again, it's the same thing right here. She just needs one Universe Six ally, and th this, I mean, re read what this does, right? Like this is quite important right here. So, she does need Universe 6 ally. Now, here's where Kale's celebration was a failure, and Dokkan failed her. Unlike a character like Super 17, who's riddled in flaws, unlike a character like Super Trunks, who's riddled in flaws, Kale is not. I, I, I do not look at this kit at all, and I'm, I'm not poking holes in it too sad. This is not a problem whatsoever. One Universe 6 ally on rotation to activate the level of buffs she's getting, not a problem. That is not bad design. It's not janky. It's nothing like that. 
The issue is not with Kale herself. They did a great job with Kale, I would say. These two, to me, are the problem. Now, Frost, more so, this is just disrespectful. I don't know what they're thinking when they want to try and, like, present Universe 6, and then with both Kabe and Frost here, like, they're, he has this unit, he's built around this unit super attack, in which, you know, where are you doing, you have to be on, like, transformation boost essentially, right? You have to have a Frieza. Now, there is, like, LR Gold and Frieza, who's very good. There are stages we could do this in. But, I mean, this is not what Kale needed. And that's, like, the point of this Frost should be to buff Kale. Make Kale better. Make Kale more enticing for people to spend money on. That is what this Frost should be. They failed this guy so badly. Frost should be a character who has 80% damage reduction for the first four turns or something like that. And then then it wears off, and then he's just a character that gets to, like, I don't know, 600k defense or something like that. If he was just that, that would still help Kale a lot, right? Obviously, I'd prefer, a, you know, a thing of what, like, STR Krillin is or something like that. Like, that would be great for Frost, but, like, they, they failed Kale so hard. The, the thing is, is they create these characters who are doing shit like this, Right? And it's like, I, like they present it as though it's like some really strong asset. Oh, yes, man. Awesome. Yahoo! We have these debuffers. We, we, we have all this stuff, right? But like in the toughest fights, which is, this is a summonable character. We want to, you know, the summonable characters in the toughest fights uh, make sense to me. But like, you know, this guy's abilities, a lot of this stuff doesn't work in the toughest fights. Same thing with like Carnival LR Omega Shenron. Right? Like, he dominates Super Battle Road fights, but, like, free-to-play characters can dominate Super Battle Road fights, so uh, I, that's that's kind of an issue. Um, Frost is obviously very limited where you could use him. It's just kind of, he's just, like, a huge L of a character. It's um, honestly pretty sad, because Frost getting, like, a good, strong character, I think, would have been nice. And, I mean, they could have made Universe 6 an interesting team, right? But they're like, yeah, nah. Um, and then Kale and Khalifa. So, Kale and Khalifa, I think that they are solid. They're solid. But it's not 2019 anymore, unfortunately. Their kit is actually just exactly the same as before the EZA, basically. Like, it's like, they have, essentially, all that's new is like this. Like, this is basically new. Everything else is, like, exactly the same with this character. They just have more stats. Um, That's fine. I think you could potentially get them to work effectively in the Omega fight. Uh, The couple of times I've used them, they've gotten obliterated. Because, I mean, they're, they start out super weak. And the beginning of that fight, you can't dodge. And he's tech. And he obliterates them. And then, I mean, it's a lot of what you're doing with them is super RNG these days and stacking the defense. When Kale and Khalifa came out, the toughest fight in the game was against a Universal Survival Saga Pure Saiyan. So they're getting two guaranteed additional supers always just from this right here. Again, remember, when they came out, we were three weeks away from the legendary Goku event that dropped. In which, uh, you know, UI Goku was the strongest enemy in the game. And UI Goku was the strongest enemy in the game for a uh, year. When was he replaced? Uh, dude, he was the strongest enemy in the game for a long time. Maybe it got to a point where some of the Super Battle Road enemies were scary or something like that. But, like, that UI Goku was the king for a long time, right? It's not like that anymore. Nowadays, we're fighting Omega Shenron and, you know, Broly and stuff like that. And sure, you know, Broly is a pure saiyan for them. But we're, they're not really fighting a ton of enemies to get all their additionals, right? You know, when when you've done 10 super attacks with this character, they're busted. Because they're going to be able to tank every normal in the game, and they're going to have a 66% chance to dodge. That's good. But I don't... Way too often... Again, a lot of the community is just... All they care about is serving agendas anyway, not actually talking facts. But this character is great once you get to turn 10. Once they've supered a million times. Which you can do in the newest fight, of course. But you have to get there first. It, this character is going to get torn up first. It's the same thing with, like, Super Trunks, right? Like, yeah, when you get to Super... No one is ever going to question how good Super Trunks is once he transforms. But getting there is an issue. And it's kind of the same thing with Kale and Khalifa here, right? You, you just... These characters, you know, these guys... Like, the well, I got these guys... These girls don't synergize the best together. They don't. Because they're the same character, right? They start... Well, I mean, Kale eventually becomes slot one. But... They're both, like, slot two characters right away. So, that's kind of a, a big deal. Um, if there was just one more Universe 6 character, ahem, Frost, 
who could go slot one at the start for these girls, like, they'd be much better off, right? We'll see. I think a, a dominant Universe 6 LR hit is something that could happen. So, there we go. Uh, this is what's going to be coming to Global, this Kale banner. And then, you know, I, I there might be another, like, random, like, free-to-play EZ or something like that. That it, I, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, they've pretty much gotten... Because, cause, like, this stuff was out. This is already on Global, right? Um... Maybe they get, like, a world tournament. Oh, this stuff is already on Global. Again, this stuff is already on Global. Like, I, I feel like most of this stuff uh, has come out. Like, it's probably just going to pretty much be, like, these three characters for a Global Dokkan until the Worldwide Download Celebration, which, I mean, it's really not the biggest deal. This is, like, a little bit of a breather. Like, we're literally, right now, for Global, this is the eye of the storm, right? You have huge anniversary, you know, little, like, two, three-week kind of, like, cool-down period. And then, at this point, I do think it is safe to say that the Worldwide Download Celebration has become the number one celebration um, for Dokkan every year. Because, uh, you know, un Anniversary is very good, but, you know, global players are experiencing a celebration that happened six months ago. Whereas, Worldwide Download Celebration is Anniversary level, but everyone is experiencing it for the first time at the same time, right? So, it it's good. It's good. So, let me know what you guys think of Kale. Please do not summon for her. Um, her banner is not worth it. I know, like, Path to Power Kid Goku is super good, but, I mean, even in the current two most difficult fights in the game, I don't like him so much. That doesn't mean he sucks. I mean, LR Ultimate Gohan, Path to Power Kid Goku, 5th Anniversary Blue Fusions, you guys have heard me saying this for weeks and months, that while they're very good, I don't like them in those fights against those AoE characters. This is not a banner that would potentially help you um, to beat Omega, right? Which, I, I mean... Uh, judging by the way a lot of people talk, it's like, I, I feel like a lot of people are aiming in that direction. Like, are these characters going to help against Omega? Kale will, but, I mean, it, it's tricky to utilize your team and stuff like that. So, only summon for Kale if you're a Kale super fan. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch y'all next time.